Today we're going to be talking about Gardner's Multiple Intelligences. This presentation was created by myself, Catherine, Clara, and Anneli. So what is Multiple Intelligences? Um, multiple Intelligences was created by Howard Gardner in 1983. His view revolutionized how people tended to see intelligence as it was always seen as a natural ability to emphasize the inner workings of the brain stemming from logical thinking, intellectual abilities, and solving problems with advanced logical reasoning. His idea proposed that unlike the traditional view of intelligence as measured by the IQ test, everyone was capable of having some sort of variation to their intelligence modalities that affected their learning styles and how they seemed to solve problems in the real world. This was very beneficial in one or more cultural contexts. There are nine types of multiple intelligences, um, starting from visual spatial intelligence. An individual that is strong in the visual spatial intelligence area are capable of interpreting abstract visual information that can be included in videos or textbook images. They're also able to take images and manipulate them, making them good at imaginative play, which can be produced creative artwork, 3D structures, formulating new ideas for an invention, getting creative when writing as they translate their inner images into creative stories or interpretive maps and diagrams. Future career choices can be architectural work, making 3D objects as an invention or in sculpting, in interpreting um, or interior or graphic designer, among others that handle spatial reasoning. These individuals enjoy working with puzzles as a hobby and paint unconventional drawings. For example, manipulating maps can be used to formulate architectural designs with their concentration on geometric shapes that can enhance their creativity as they use the shapes, transformations to create new designs and structural components that are eccentric. In mathematical computation, these students prefer to be given the whole picture to try to formulate the inner parts of it, making them prone to working together um, in group work where they can collaborate with other students can come up with a solution rather than listening to a step-by-step -step process um, given through direct instruction. Likewise, students can be given graphics and visual representations of science phenomena that can be included as part of the lesson where students can use the data presentation to interpret its meaning, their experimental conditions, or even noticing patterns between variables such as correlations and causations. The teacher can also include the use of making anchor charts with students during a lesson to accommodate information, using images with labels or even diagrams for the distinction between two or more topics that can share similar characteristics. On the right are some links for further exploration to help students in increase their visual spatial awareness that may be like to creative critical thinking as they advance through school and a parent and teacher guide to understand how to best help these students. Um, the next one is linguistic verbal intelligence. Students that prosper in the linguistic verbal area are superior with the sounds of words, learning phonics quickly at a young age and understanding how these make up the writing system. These children can also extend their knowledge of vocabulary and rhyming words that depict word families that are vital for the acquisition of new vocabulary words that increase their reading proficiency and writing mastery necessary in their educational careers as there is a societal emphasis on this domain in lower and higher education, jobs, and this is, this is the domain commonly emphasized in traditional view of intelligence. Though or through this extensive expertise in language, they are able to extract root words and interpret prefix and suffix meanings that increase their vocabulary use and comprehension of higher lexile um, reading levels. Students are also able to analyze written language well, which contribute to their amusement in creative writing props and researching about topics of choice. They can also explain their inner workings of their mind well by explaining in-depth concepts as seen in their participation in class discussion and answering questions. Inside the classroom, teachers can guide reading comprehension checks with students during small group or individual work to ensure that students are understanding the material. Since these students are able to understand the material faster than others do um, individualized reading, they can benefit from highlighting, showing where they obtain the information from in the text, and numbering their paragraphs when asked to work together with their teammates so they can describe their reasoning to others that may not be familiar with extracting information from articles or textbooks. Since these students are inclined to storytelling, it may be vital for teachers to allow these students to create their own stories on the material to increase their creativity and ability to retain information, such as allowing them to build a newspaper article and broadcast a student-led TED Talk, or even producing a comic strip as a project. These students um, really enjoy presenting their projects verbally to their classmates 
and further discussing their chosen topic. Likewise, debating topics is considered enjoyable, where they can further delve into their topics by proposing ways they can their contact can be in favor or against their ideas, which increases collaboration between students needed for the development of higher order thinking for solving complex problems. On the right, these resources further explain how to teach students in each subject area through example of its implementation and characteristics that these students depict inside and outside of the classroom. Um, we have this musical intelligence also. So students that are musically inclined are students that have the ability to differentiate between musical tones of a song melody, a group of sounds, or even instructional type. From these tones, they're able to discriminate between pitch and tunes as they naturally seek patterns in what they're listening to. They also tend to enjoy playing a variety of instruments as they enjoy writing music and trying out different beats and melodies. Likewise, they continuously listen to music and use music to their advantage to help them memorize information for school as they are their creative and writing rhyming songs. The application of musical intelligence inside the classroom is allowing students to create songs and rhymes for vocabulary words as they aid in memorization. In addition to using the collaborative efforts of students to create mnemonic devices, based on musical elements. Adding beats or even using music to accompany lessons is a great way to keep students engaged and allowing class to not feel intimidated or boring to students. A good tool that can be used in many subjects, including language arts, science, math, history, and even life skills is a website called Flocabulary. Flocabulary allows students to listen to songs that relate to the material being taught with discussions questions that can accompany the lesson, read and respond question, quiz, a music lab where students get to create and make their own music, make vocabulary flashcards, and test their vocabulary on the topic. The instructor creates their own classes and gives the code to students so they can join their vocabulary class so the instructor can assign the content to them. On the right hand side, we have um, typical characteristics and activities for the development of musical intelligence and future career choices or hobbies that these students tend to enjoy. Bodily kinesthetic intelligence is one of the intelligences um, outlined by Gardner. And uh, basically, individuals that have uh, this intelligence uh, can resolve problems using their body or part of their body. Uh, basically, uh, mental abilities are used to coordinate bodily movements, and mental and physical activities are seen as related. This is the fifth intelligence by Gardner. Uh, examples are athletes, for example, a swimmer, um, you know, a, a basketball player, a football player, anybody who um, is an athlete that uses their whole body to, um, you know, play a game, score, and so on. Or it could be um, a craft maker um, working with uh, metal, wood, uh, a sculpture. Um, also, um, it could also be a student that likes to learn by being active while he or she learns. Um, it has been said also that uh, students with ADHD usually use this intelligence to learn. Um, so basically, uh, this intelligence, uh, what, what you observe with this is that uh, people learn by doing. Some applications for further exploration. Uh, Howard Gardner explained in um, his project called The Good Work that if a teacher is an excellent teacher, knows her stuff or his stuff, is willing to engage with um, the audience or his, her students, his or her students, and is ethical, if they live by the above, excellency, engaged, and ethical, they will be able to help any student um, by observing how the student learns best. Um, so what would uh, lessons be like for kinesthetic learners? Um, basically use movement where possible, dance, singing, using games, playing charades. Here we have an example of um, Sarah Booher from the Denton School of Law who uh, gave a talk about how to engender success in the kinesthetic learners. She was diagnosed with ADHD on her second year of law school. And in her talk, she said that kinesthetic learners behave differently because they need to move around to capture information. 
but there are basic things a professor of law can do to keep these students engaged. For example, act out cases, uh, role play to explain concepts, bring tangible objects to the students to connect with visuals, um, do spontaneous oral arguments, play Jeopardy for terms, um, YouTube videos, games to order words, and have a place where students can stand up. Also, um, students can take uh, ownership of their education. For example, if they have to do some heavy reading or anything like that, get comfortable, find a com comfortable space, take breaks in between for your study sessions, um, eat uh, good snacks, uh, and move, move around, dance, uh, do whatever you, it takes for you to memorize or you know, uh, learn the information that you need um while you are still you know fidgeting and she said it's not easy for them to do that but that um these are good techniques for more information you can go ahead and click on um the red square here and you can actually see her in action a person who learns by using interpersonal intelligence will demonstrate he or she can communicate effectively People with this intelligence learn by socializing and learning about others around them. They are career-oriented and will most likely seek to be involved in an enterprising career where they can use their communication skills. Smart goal setting is important for interpersonal learning because it helps anchor employability skills. Students can learn from exploring smart goals in the classroom and setting up realistic goals they can use every day while they go about communicating with others and expanding on their ability to relate to others. So basically, interpersonal intelligence um, describes people that understand other people, they communicate effectively. Um, uh, Howard Gardner has said that one of the um, biggest examples is Martin Luther King uh, Jr. Um, he also says that uh, somebody like a salesperson or a car salesperson uh, will have this type of ability and also other uh, leaders like Nelson Mandela who was able to end apartheid in South Africa. So there is a big range of uh, career um, opportunities or missions in life for these people. Uh, he labeled this as his six intelligence. Um, for practical uh, purposes for teachers, uh, teachers have to be aware that some classes are more talkative than others and uh, that uh, they can use this ability to their advantage. Uh, for example, use more discussion and communication for students who, re who require it, um, create lessons around group projects. Um, also, uh, very important is to give the students the opportunity to apply empathy in the learning process. Uh, speech classes uh, where, um, or projects where students can negotiate and um, setting up SMART goals uh, will also work for these uh, types of people. Um, according to uh, Sarah Christensen, author at Develop Good Habits, um, she recommends uh, eight SMART goals that will help interpersonal intelligent people. Uh, for example, uh, become more empathetic, improve leadership skills, uh, read a book on interpersonal skills, improve nonverbal communications, improve listening skills, um, listening to podcasts on conflict resolution, improve conflict resolution skills, and initiate conversations with strangers. So applications and further exploration. For teachers, uh, teach collaborative skills. Have students research leaders who use interpersonal skills. Uh, study the ups and downs of dealing with others to communicate effectively. Use um, skits, uh, writing and projects that instill expression of ideas. Um, teach lessons that require teamwork, peer-to-peer -peer work, delivery of presentations, negotiations, uh, clubs or meetings that enable leadership development. So uh, there is an article on how to teach kids with interpersonal um, intelligence. And um, 
basically um, Matthew Lynch says that interpersonal skills can be taught in the classroom by giving peer-to-peer -peer work uh, to help um, students develop interpersonal intelligence. They can be encouraged to head class meetings, organize um, small and big group activities, and even become um, student leaders. So you can pair a student with a high interpersonal intelligence and shy and introverted classmates. Interpersonal learners are intuitive, resilient, and self-confident. They know about time management and its importance and they apply it. They can be directed to higher goal seeking and guided towards activities that lead to self-expression, such as writing and journaling. An interpersonal intelligent person understands himself or herself. Uh, it is a person that meditates. Uh, it can be a leader. Um, the Dalai Lama comes to mind. Um, the, uh, he has been at the helm of the Tibetan Bud Buddhism for many, many years. Uh, he's 86 and he's extremely uh, inspirational uh, for the masses of people uh, and probably uh, because of his interpersonal intelligence. Uh, a person that has that intelligence can control their actions, their thoughts. Um, they are very self-aware and they understand their emotions. Uh, we have students like that, uh, teachers that can provide opportunities for those students. Uh, they do journaling, for example. They have goal-setting activities. They have the students work at their own pace, uh, create create um, individual work that is creative. Um, also um, allow for opportunities um, for the students to meditate and uh, look inside themselves and develop that intelligence even further. Uh, what are the applications uh, and further exploration? Uh, for example, uh, nowadays we have a lot of violence in schools, but some schools are starting to practice uh, with meditation in place of detention, uh, and that has yielded positive results. Uh, there is an article and a video here um, about an elementary school in West Baltimore that uses meditation in place of detention that I thought was very interesting. Uh, and uh, students are reporting that they feel better, that uh, instead of uh, being stressed uh, and answering back and uh, overreacting, they actually feel better after meditation. So this also helps them to increase uh, knowledge of themselves. Um, oddly enough, uh, Montessori education um, also started in 1910, and Maria Montessori, who was also a, a psycho um, psychiatrist, she developed this method to help children that had a lot of problems uh, relating with each other and with themselves and learning. And um, they were thought of as um, students with disabilities, learning disabilities. She developed a method that allows the student to choose their own lessons um, or what they want to learn at the moment. And uh, the lessons are geared towards uh, using manipulatives and actually using concrete materials to learn. And uh, Montessori students um, are reported to learn uh, faster and learn more math than uh, traditional education for the grades, for the elementary grades. Uh, another thing that uh, can help students with intrapersonal um, intelligence are extracurricular activities that encourage them to learn about themselves and also to help with personal goal setting. Um, small children can benefit from calming lessons uh, a break in between the lessons to relax and let go of stress, such as yoga, for example. 
Uh, students can be taught techniques to develop their own internal compass, such as meditation and Tai Chi, which is um, a meditation form that includes movement. Some potential careers for individuals with interpersonal skills um, are entrepreneurs, historians, inventors, philosophers, uh, psychologists, and leaders, um, spiritual leaders. According to uh, Gardner in his book, uh, Frames of Mind, um, he also discussed the importance uh, of culture as a determining factor in both the interpersonal and the interpersonal intelligence. And he explains that in certain societies like the Maori in New Zealand, a man's identity is determined by his inherited status and his relationship with his group. And outside of the group, a Maori is no one. So basically, for those societies, uh, the, the sense of personal self is at, actually attached to a group. Um, whereas in Western society, we encourage individualism, the opposite. Uh, there is an emphasis on the self in all aspects of life, political, philosophical, um, literary. So uh, there is um, a big difference and culture is a very big uh, reason for that. So in conclusion, um, both interpersonal and intrapersonal intelligences are related. Uh, they are linked to culture. And teachers have to be aware of, um, you know, the fact that uh, students can have um, both, a measure of both intelligences. Some can be more interpersonal. Some can be more intrinsically intelligent, and the lessons can vary depending on the types of students that uh, the teacher will be teaching. Another type of multiple intelligence is the natural intelligence. These are students who have the ability to recognize and categorize different objects in the environment. Some of the interests that these students have is botanics, biology, biology, and zoology. They also have the ability to categorize and catalog information easily. This type of student prefer camping, gardening, hiking, and exploring the outdoors. For this type of students, they prefer the information to be presented in a first-hand interaction, also in hands-on experiments, in illustration like going outside and taking photos, and also creating journals. Example of famous people in with this type of natural intelligence are Charles Darwin and Jane. Good all. For the application of further exploration, uh, activities that professors can do with this type of student, uh, just avoid presenting familiar topics that have no connection to nature. Uh, they can practice conversations, have a classroom plant or animal like pets to take care for, go out for nature walks. The professors can integrate the species classifications in the lessons. Um, they can provide hands-on on labs of natural materials. Uh, there's also online games, like the animal games for kids. And I'm providing the link right here. Um, for future, uh, for these students, like potential careers can be botanics, biologists, astronomer, meteorologists, or geologists, or anything that has to do with resolving any natural problems or future issues. The next intelligence is the logical 
mathematical intelligence. These are the type of students that have more like conceptual thinking. They perceive logical and numerical patterns easily. They can carry out mathematical operations. Uh, they prefer puzzles so they can put pieces together. Uh, they can make deductions and reasoning also easily out of resolving these puzzles. So for these students, they prefer the information to be presented in numbers, uh, equations, logical problems. Uh, teachers can use symbols, uh, apply a specific terminology for them. That's easy for them to understand too. They also like to be in a cooperative setting. They can develop strategies for solving tasks and performing as decision makers. Uh, by most people, they have been known to have this intelligence as Stephen Hawking, Isaac Newton, and Thomas Edison. For the application of further explanation, in the classroom, the professors and teachers can provide opportunities for problem solving. They can involve calculator as one way if they give like a specific like mathematical problem to solve one numeric problem. They can create activities that involve this deciphering a code, kind of like a escape room of or like kids. Uh, they can use patterns or logic games, kind of like the card games. Uh, especially su suitable ones for, for those kids. I'm also including a link here for that. Uh, they can organize new information in outline format, so maybe like breaking it down the step by steps or in portions for them to understand better. Uh, career choices for this type of students can be computer programmers, System analytics, accounting specialists, finances, and investment consultants. They can also be mathematical specialists, uh, statistic, statistics. And then the last uh, intelligence that we're going to cover is existential intelligence. Uh, in some books, even the ones that have garden. As wrote, he only talks about the eight previous ones. Uh, he considers this one as a candidate uh, for the ninth intelligence. Uh, I think it has just recently, actually more recently, we have been seeing this intelligence flourish in some other studies. Is why it has become a part of the group. But Garden does not consider, doesn't consider us one of them. Uh, and this intelligence is the capacity to be sensitive within the inner mind. And it's the relationship to begin in the world of the human existence, close to the multiple levels of consciousness. So, kind of like the higher order for that person or that student. Uh, this can be seen in critical thinkers and people who, or students who seek out activities that serves the meaning and purpose constantly, like who they are, what they're here for. They seek seeking meaningful learning experience. So those are the type of students they like to kind of have a takeaway out of every lesson that they want to learn or anything that can help them kind of grow as a person. And um, example of famous people who have been recognized to have this intelligence is Aristotle, Socrates, Plato, and Einstein. 
So for the application and further exploration of this intelligence is not a lot uh, over out there um, because it's, it's being brought a kind of new to this group of intelligence. But what, how it can be used is actual uh, teachers can make parallel can make parallels between the material being learned and the surrounding world. Uh, they can promote students' desire to see the big picture uh, by giving them summaries of the topics. Access, they can ask the students to consider a subject from a numerous perspective. Uh, students should be asked to summarize the lesson that they have learned kind of in their own words. Um, and also including a link to uh, to show a bit more ideas and examples of this. So to stimulate further thinking about this topic, here are some questions to consider. Which type of intelligence do you believe that you have a strength in? Uh, considering the benefit of each, which one do you consider to be the most important to develop for your current job of further career aspirations? Do you believe that these varieties should be used in the K-12 academic settings? And uh, here are our reference. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.